so basically um first of all before st before I start let's see um i would like to also acknowledge my co-organizers which are not connected uh, here today i think uh so um, basically my co-organizers Jocelyn Dunstan from the Center of Mathematical Modeling at the Faculty of Physical Science and Mathematics of the University of Chile, and Francisco Coto from the Department of Informatics of the Faculty of Sciences of the University of Lisbon. They co-organized with me this workshop. And as you can see already, we tried to actually have a view of people from different regions and countries, which are related to Iberian languages and, and content. So from Portugal and also from Latin America, and they also actually shaped quite a lot the like, type of complementary content and, and organizational issues of this workshop. So thanks a lot to Jocelyn and Francisco for actually making this uh, possible. Um, I, I think it's important also to actually see this like um, collaborative effort across different regions to promote resources in, in NLP, in, in content which goes beyond English and includes obviously also English as well. Um, before I start, and this workshop is actually possible because there's a, an initiative in Spain uh, promoted by the Ministry of Economy uh, uh, called the Plan for Advancement of Language Technologies. Uh, I think this uh, kind of effort is, is very important also for other kind of languages and resources in, in the sense that it is a way to actually promote the development of uh, high quality uh, linguistic infrastructure. So meaning uh, annotated data collections, corpora uh, labeled uh, data basically is what you need actually to develop these kind of NLP resources. Uh, this national plan also tries to promote coverage and, and creation of terminological and ontological, uh, let's say lexical resources for natural language processing tools, particularly for uh, Spanish or other kind, kind of co-official languages in Spain, but also English, obviously. Um, and also the development of uh, high impact uh, building block components, NLP components, which are required to actually extract and process uh, health related and, and food and nutritional health related content, like linguistic components, tokenizers, sentence splitters, part of speech targets, but also, and that's really key because here you need to have like the domain experts involved, semantic uh, components in terms of named entity recognition, concept recognition, normalization, entity linking uh, resources, as well as more sophisticated NLP tools for aspects like negation or, or like time expressions. Uh, this national plan uh, also uh, basically promotes development through shared tasks. So we're, we're organizing quite a lot of shared tasks and evaluation campaigns. So it's key to know quality of these components, but uh, also to share annotated resources in the context of evaluation campaigns and shared tasks. And I will you know, summarize some of them and some actually have uh, quite some connection also to food and nutrition related contact, uh, content. Um, this uh, national plan really tries not only to promote these linguistic infrastructures, but also to transfer these results uh, from academia to industry, to companies, or to promote actually also development uh, of uh, components at, at the commercial level. For this, obviously, you need to collaborate with those which have content, which have data, and which have actually the needs, the uh, use cases and the, the user demands. Uh, so we're collaborating with hospitals, with several libraries, the Spanish National Health Library and the Latin American version, with agencies such as the, um, the uh, medi uh, medical agency in Spain, the patent office, and, and other, let's say, institutions, public institutions. Um, so and, and here I see like the driving forces on which, we, which we're focusing. And I would like to um, um, highlight that these driving forces do apply also to promote resources specifically for NLP applied to food, health, and nutrition. So obviously one of the kind of key resources or driving forces behind that is access to large collections of health-related, food-related content, um, food and nutrition-related content. Uh, then also not only to the content as such as raw data, but also to have 
this data clean, standardized, made with some particular metadata information, and also annotated uh, at the document and, and the textual level to actually implement, train, and evaluate uh, NLP components. Obviously, in order to standardize and uh, integrate such tools in practice, uh, what is important also is to promote the development of uh, controlled vocabularies and ontologies, uh, specifically in the case of food and nutrition. I think we have the scenario these uh, different terminological resources are sort of disconnected and scattered. So there are silos on more clinical kind of terminologies, there are silos on agriculture related uh, terminologies, so still some more intricate, in, intricate and integration effort needs to be developed here as well, specifically for food and nutrition resources. Um, we actually think it's important to uh, promote also the sharing of code and the generating of open source code to actually uh, reuse, build and uh, improve components at the level of uh, NLP processing of food and nutrition content and to actually be able to um, integrate such components also into some processing platforms. So that, to make them you know, really useful, you need to be able to build platforms and um, apply them to uh, high impact use cases in food and nutrition. Um, so I already told you about this share task. So having, a, let's say, a common, um, effort uh, around some particular manually annotated data set and to promote people solving this problem in a more competitive ways is, is, is an important uh, strategy to promote the development of new resources and also to promote the development of components which are state of the art or beyond in terms of the methodology. So cutting edge deep learning, a language model application really need shared tasks actually to, to um, promote the development of, of, of more competitive solutions. Um, so when you look at the what could be done to actually boost or promote and foster um, development of food and nutrition related uh, NLP technologies, I think it's important to see what people did for other kinds of application domains, such as the clinical field. So in the clinical NLP domain, people already identified key aspects and I think they're quite related to the these pillars I showed previously. So these uh, key aspects relate to access to uh, data and to annotated data, manually annotated data, so shared shared corpora, um, access to open open data collections, annotated high quality data, access to shared code and also to uh, adapted uh, resources building on more NLP or, or deep learning or more general machine learning uh, libraries. Uh, uh, these share tasks and evaluation efforts to promote development of new tools, to know how good these tools are in terms of quality, and also to uh, be able to uh, monitor progress uh, as technology evolves. So uh, there are also barriers identified in the case of clinical NLP, and some of these barriers are obviously are the same for uh, health and uh, food and nutrition related uh, NLP uh, applications. So one are legal aspects. So partially, you know, if they're like um, clinical uh, records which related to nutrition uh, of patient and 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 um, food uh, allergies or drug interactions, obviously there's some legal aspects in terms of data privacy, which need to be taken into account. There are legal aspects also related to um, intellectual property and uh, license of some of these data collections. Uh, it's important to actually um, think about the sustainability of these resources as well. So these are barriers. So when you build these, these systems, it's important not to actually generate outdated or not, not well-maintained uh, um, components or terminologies and to, to think about the interoperability. So how to actually interconnect both the NLP components as well as the terminologies a little, little more efficiently. So I told you about shared tasks. So those which are not so familiar with these settings. So basically shared tasks uh, as a sort of competitive um, effort 
usually connected to some conference. So here in, in Zeppelin, there's the EBLF uh, uh, evaluation campaign. So basically, these are like tasks, uh, usually um, tasks which are should be high impact. Uh, they are, rely on manually labeled data, annotated copper, usually connected with some quality control and um, of sufficient size to implement and to evaluate more like advanced uh, machine learning uh, based NLP applications. Uh, this uh, kind of shared task basically um, required recruitment of domain experts to label the data. So in, in this case, like uh, health or food and nutrition uh, experts to prepare gold standard labeled data. Uh, then basically during some uh, development phase, initial collection, uh, part of the data is released. People are using it to fine tune, train, implement their tools and later on in a testing phase uh, with a, let's say hidden labels with an additional data collections systems are being evaluated using some you know, standard metrics some quality uh, controls so um, these shared tasks are really important to promote uh, development of new resources and in the context of the national plan we have been organizing quite a lot of different uh, shared tasks so some, some of them of the recent ones have to do with the detection of professions and occupations. And as you can imagine, in the context of food and nutrition, there's several occupations which uh, are at risk. So those which are actually manipulating or in the, in the food industry, they can have like uh, health related issues like allergies, intoxications or infection with particular pathogens, foodborne diseases. Uh, we were also organizing shared tasks more on uh, indexing. So if you want to actually, first of all, select what kind of content might be related to food and nutrition, their control vocabularies, such as the mesh terms, some of them are actually relevant for uh, indexing food uh, related uh, content like foodborne diseases, food drug inductions, their control vocabularies to cover them. So um, we're also promoting shared tasks to index and basically to label content with particular structure terminologies. And uh, a recent task, which is ongoing, is also to see interactions between, for instance, chemicals and, and proteins. So in the case of food, obviously, this is also an important aspect. Um, I told you about this gold standard or annotated corpora. So basically, what we need in the context of food and nutrition is to have data labeled according to particular annotation guidelines, criteria which are shared and which are high quality to generate label data for NLP components. And I see, I show you here an example of a data collection we did. In this case, it's COVID related, but basically uh, what you need is uh, annotations, high quality, text bound, and also normalized or mapped to some structural vocabulary to make these resources really useful in terms of interoperability and, and integration with uh, end applications. So we need these kind of resources also for um, food and nutrition, and particularly for high impact entities, which are important for downstream text mining tasks and, and applications in, in food health and nutrition. What kind of entities might be important in this context? So I think what is needed here is actually to prioritize by the community what should be actually annotated uh, manually, uh, what, and what kind of data should be annotated also, what kind of content, social media, literature, electronic health records, patient uh, forum, what kind of content and what kind of key concept should be labeled. What, using, let's say, transparent pr procedures of quality control of this manual labeling process and actually to share this resulting uh, corpora label data with the community to promote further you know, in development of, of NLP components. There are different kind of entities which we know are important. And uh, during the talks we see later on in these uh, workshops, we will cover some of these entities. Obviously, uh, for food, uh, one key entity type is species. So basically, what kind of species or, or, or organism uh, is connected to the food. Uh, diseases, which are more specific and, and, and adverse reactions, which uh, are connected to food and nutrition particular kind of clinical procedures. In this case, it's more related to uh, clinical content. Uh, obviously, there are symptoms which are very important to extract in terms of food safety and uh, intoxications and, and food-related uh, you know, allergies. 
uh, obviously uh, drugs and medications and interactions of drugs and medications with food uh, is important to characterize and we will have a talk on this topic later on as well as well as in some cases also occupational safety you know and and people which are exposed to to to, to food in the food industry sector um in in this particular context uh, obviously i mean we, what we should try to focus on in, in, you know, in future efforts is to have efficient tools for gathering data, cleaning the data, and pre-processing this data, for semantically annotating data and, and document collection, particularly with these kind of entities uh, of importance for food and nutrition, to standardize and link these uh, mentions extracted from, uh, from running text to control vocabularies and ontologies, and also to prioritize which terminological resources are key here. We know Agrarock, there's UMLS, there are different kinds of uh, terminologies. So it's important to actually see how this, you know, what's the coverage and the usage of these different terminologies for data standardization and to align these components also with high impact practical use cases. We need to have the end users in the design of all these different steps and also the, the NLP uh, data annotation part. Uh, in, in this workshop, some of the data will also cover content in Spanish, so the, um, beyond English, uh, one has to highlight there's quite a lot of content uh, in Spanish, publications, electronic records, social media, it's spoken by many peoples. Obviously, we would like to promote also processing of content in other languages, not only in Spanish, Portuguese, English, German, Italian, all the languages, you know, in, in the European Union at least. Um, and also when implementing these kind of uh, tools, it's important to take into account specific um, aspects or challenges of health and food nutrition related language. You all know that it's a, a highly interdisciplinary field. There's content more coming from agriculture and agricultural science, from food industry and technology, from clinical and health related content, from um, user-generated content in social media and patient fora. So it, each of these different kind of uh, data type has a different value and practical uh, um, application and also different characteristics when applying NLP. So you need to have some adaptation and fine tuning depending on the content and the application domain. But in general, obviously there are many English expression and names in this, in this kind of content. There are not neologisms, Still, it's important to outline that um, the clinic, the, the language in, in food nutrition is not very standardized. They're using abbreviations and, and uh, acronyms. There, there's some uh, ambiguity in these kind of uh, languages. Uh, and also, in particularly in food and nutrition, there are quite a lot of localisms and language variants. So even, in, for instance, in Spanish, if you apply these systems in Spain, they will not work very well if you apply them later on to Chile or to Argentina, especially food related language has quite some differences depending on regions, uh, lexical variants and language variants. So uh, going back to the topics, so basically, you know that the topic is food nutrition applied to different kinds of data. And we also want to see how, how to actually benchmark such, such tools somehow. Um, the aim of the workshop is actually to engage the community, to have different kinds of topics, to see whether we can learn from the different kinds of application uh, scenarios and data types, and to dis disseminate these efforts as well. Um, there are different kinds of content I already told you about, and uh, we would like to cover in these different sessions different kinds of content, as you will see, uh, different kinds of textual data and input. Uh, and different kinds of application scenarios from you know, um, foodborne infections, allergies, uh, microorganisms, and uh, nutritional you know, um, in information. So I'm, I think uh, as I'm uh, running almost out of time, we have two sessions. The first session, uh, mining on social media and, and also health, healthy lifestyle information by Analia. And then we will have something more technical on NLP technologies and food and nutrition, uh, also in the context of a European project. And um, Enrique will also tell us about some efforts on drug interactions with uh, food uh, from extracted from scientific literature and text. Then we will have a, 
a talk by members of my group uh, explaining some research we did in the context of the Spanish national NLP plan. And in the second session, we will have a very comprehensive overview on different kinds of uh, resources and aspects uh, related to information extraction, named entity recognition, and normalization uh, of uh, key concepts in, in, in food and nutrition by Tome. Uh, this is a longer talk, and I think it will be in very interesting to see, you know, in a more comprehensive uh, view what has been done in this sense. And then we will have a talk by Claire. So I think uh, she will focus more on micro microbial uh, strains and a more practical application also to the aspect related to the food industry and development of food products. And finally, uh, we will have a very nice, uh, let's say, view also from Kasten on the uh, European Food Safety Authority and in terms of exchanging content, news on data science and food safety from, from this more like regulatory perspective. So um, I'm not going to give an overview on, on each of these. So I think we are already more or less, you know, one minute behind the, the schedule. So just let's start with the IPA Health 2021. And thanks to everyone attending the, the workshop. And I'm very excited to have this, you know, this very interesting um, sessions and talks. So th thank you very much and welcome to IPA 2021.